All right, so today we've got the pleasure of speaking with Jesse. Jesse is one of our former students that just got his results. And Jesse, how'd you do? How's it feel? I passed. Wow, it's a uh, it's, it's a huge weight off my shoulders just seeing that uh, seeing that green, uh, you know, label on on my NCES account. Um, I, I still occasion I got the results back. Uh, I think tomorrow will be three weeks, um, but I'll still occasionally sign in just to see it because I'm still in disbelief. That's amazing. And um, is that how you got your results? Were you just kind of checking in uh, every few days or did you get an email saying to go check uh, your account? So uh, yeah, uh, the morning of, oh yeah, the, the morning of the, res the excuse me, um, the morning that I saw the results, I received an email from NCES saying that results were available. And then um, I'm, I, guessing, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off. And then I'm guessing you got that email and your, your part probably skipped a beat. And you probably thought I need to stop everything that I'm doing right now and, and race to my computer and, and check the results. Uh, yes, um, I knew. Uh, so I, I knew that um, just, just, just from reading from other people's experiences, I knew that it would, I would probably get the results back the Wednesday following my exam um, or two Wednesdays because when I took it. But uh, so I, and, I, and, the, and every, everyone made it sound like, you know, you're going to get the email like early, like first thing in the morning. So I, I had trouble sleeping. And then as soon as I saw that email, I was like, oh God, it's, it's happening. Here we go. Um, and then uh, I signed in, I, I saw the green thing. My, well, I signed in, I saw the green, uh, my, my heart stopped or, or skipped a beat just momentarily. And I was like, oh my God, it's over. This whole ordeal. It's done. Um, how about, uh, have you done anything special to celebrate or anything like that? Uh, so, um, when, when my girlfriend got back from her vacation, we, uh, we, th this was already pre-planned, so the timing kind of worked out. Um, but we, we, we went out to, uh, to a nice, uh, rooftop, uh, place in, in, uh, in, in, in the city. And, uh, you know, it was, it was very nice. It was a very, uh, it, it felt a little luxurious. So that kind of helped, you know, tie in with the whole, you know, celebratory atmosphere. Um, uh, but obviously, you know, with, with the COVID numbers spiking up, you know, I, I couldn't do anything uh, super fun with my friends or anything, unfortunately. But I definitely still took the time with your girlfriend to just, you know, celebrate your success. Big sigh of relief. It's over. I don't have to worry about this anymore. It's in the rear view mirror and I can, I can move forward. No more late night studying, no more logging into class or kind of get, get your time back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know that for her, um, I, I know that she didn't really appreciate, well, I mean, I guess in the long run, she will, no doubt, but, uh, at, at, at the short term, there were, in the short term, there were definitely sacrifices made by her as well. Um, uh, you know, cause she, um, you know, she, she obviously couldn't spend as much time with me as, as, as we both would have liked. Uh, so, um, and I, I also have on, on a, on a somewhat related note, I, I have to thank her and her roommates for their hospitality. Um, just I will, we'll, we'll talk more about this, I guess, in a bit, but it was having, having a place to study, uh, was very, um, conducive and then really helped me, you know, get into a good rhythm. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, for her, I was there, but, you know, we couldn't do anything fun. Um, so I, uh, I, I, I made it clear to her that I really appreciate, you know, the, what, what she did and the, and the support that she gave. Yeah, those, uh, those support systems are, are so important. And uh, so often it's easy to kind of forget about the other person. And, you know, they might not be putting in the hours as hard as you are, but, you know, they're with you the whole time. And uh, sometimes we forget that we're not the only ones making the sacrifice. It's uh, our other loved ones, especially when, you know, we're in, uh, in a relationship because we might be there in body, but, you know, our mind and soul is on transformers, you know, motors, NEC protection, you know, it's uh, it really kind of saps all the attention away from everything else during that period, except, you know, the bare essentials, you know, wake up, go to work, study, and then eat and sleep somewhere in between. So yeah, that's, uh, that's excellent. I'm glad you had those uh, support systems. I, um, you know, when, one, one of my big worries when I, when I, when I knew the results were coming was that, you know, I was like, oh God, if I fail this, I have to ask her to, uh, to, to put up with this a little bit longer. Um, but you know, it, it worked out, uh, again, I, I, I have, I have so much to be there. I, I have, I have to be, I, I am so thankful for everything that she put into it. Uh, and that, you know, and very appreciative that we won't have to go through this again. I'm, uh, I'm bet she is just as relieved as you are when you, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, how about, uh, why don't you tell us more about what part of the industry are you in? So I work in, uh, I, I work in rail and transit. Um, so, uh, I guess, well, yeah, so a, a little bit off the beaten path, I, I, I like to think. Um, so I, when I graduated college, I started, my first assignment was doing a traction power analyses for, uh, for both AC and DC systems. Um, that was, that was my first exposure to, to one line draw to one line diagrams with, uh, you know, specifically for the DC stuff where you had, you know, high voltage coming in and, you know, these large, you know, uh, the, these large rectifiers you know, between the, between the inputs and the overhead systems and, and things like that. Um, uh, lately, I've been working in on the train control side of things, so less power related, but I'm, but I'm hoping to, uh, especially now that I have the PE done, um, to transition back into more, uh, you know, technical power stuff within, of, within rail and transit. Uh, a lot of PLCs on the train controls, or is it still a lot of just old school relays? Um, it, it wasn't even that. So I, I was more on the systems engineering side, which is more of a, which I found out over time, uh, you know, is more of a process than uh, it's, it's more of, I guess, a, a process kind of engineering, if that makes sense, rather than like technical. Um, I can tell you, however, that on uh, this, this was incidentally related to my job, but I can tell you that a lot of, you know, railroad interlockings, they still use, they still use relays. Um, they are slowly but surely transitioning over to, uh, to PLCs. Um, but relays are probably still very, very dominant in the industry. And uh, when you're talking about um, kind of railway transit, I'm picturing, so here in Tampa, we have uh, street trolleys where it's, uh, it's an overhead, I think it's, I think it's DC, um, it's an overhead line, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe about 20 feet high. And the, the car, as it goes down the track, it, it makes a connection along the whole way, almost like a bumper car and an old uh, carnival. Is that uh, kind of... Does that describe it? Uh, so yes. Um, so I so I'm, I'm I'm in the New York City area, and and the major commuter railroads uh, here they use they use the overhead line, and then some also use third rail, not just the subway, but also one of the one of the commuter railroads uses third rail. Um, but yeah, you you have the right idea. It's a you know it's it's a physical contact system with with the wayside in some way. Excellent. And uh, how about? Um... When you decided to uh, take the PE exam, um, tell me more about your thought process behind that. Were you looking for uh, more career opportunities, maybe increased compensation, uh, additional responsibility, uh, the, uh, you know, signing and sealing documents, or, or what was your, your motivation to put yourself through this uh, task of studying and passing the PE exam? Uh, I would say that it was probably, you know, 70% wanting to, wanting to find, wanting to open up my career up, wanting to, you know, find more career opportunities and like 30% uh, compensation. You know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, obviously compensation is a part of that. So I'm not going to try to, you know, um, you know, underappreciate that. Um, but I, you know, the, especially with the project wrapping up, I'm, I'm still with the same company. I'm not, I'm, I'm not actively looking to leave, but it's, it's getting to the point where I need to, you know, you know, find my next assignment within uh, either within the company or elsewhere. Um, and, and, you know, over the course of, you know, 2021, I figured, you know, hey, this would be, if I can get this done by the end, of, if I can, if I can get the PE done by the end of the year, that would, that would really, you know, help things fall into place. Definitely. Yeah. Having that, having that, those two simple letters right at the end of your name, it uh, really opens up uh, so many opportunities, both um, you know, with current employment opportunities or future, maybe, you know, down the road, uh, it really opens up a lot of doors. Um, how about, uh, talk to me about some, uh, what were the challenges you faced while you were studying for, oh, wait, I skipped the one ahead. Um, have you taken the PE exam before or was this your first time? Uh, this was my first time. First time. So one and done. Excellent. So your only experience has been with the uh, CBT format. Correct. Great. Um, so yeah, let's go back to that last question. Tell me, what were your challenges? Uh, what were your biggest challenges um, with the, the PE exam in general, uh, maybe with the, the relatively new CBT format and uh, you know, feel free to explore anything you know, in between. So um, uh, can, I, can I talk more about like studying and such in, in this? Absolutely. Okay. okay, so for me though, the biggest challenge was, uh, was, getting, into a, was getting into a study routine. Um, I wasn't with respect to like with respect to the the CPT format and whether or not I was intimidated by it. Uh, I would say that the 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 
the, the NCES sample exam that they published really helped, um, uh, really helped, uh, it helped me prepare for what I was gonna face when I sat down in front of the computer in terms of the format and the layouts and things like that. Um, so I wasn't going into the exam Having having taken the sample exam, I, I felt pretty good about you know going about the CBTC stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the hardest part for this whole process for me was definitely you know get was definitely finding a rhythm. Um, I think I might have mentioned this in some of the comments I sent you uh, before, uh, but um, uh, your 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 class is challenging. Uh, <laughs> your your class is difficult and very rigorous, and ten out of ten would recommend. Um, but it's getting started and finding and finding the right way to uh, and and getting into a good routine. Like like for example, um, I apologize if I'm get it if I'm rambling a little bit. Uh, but um, like for example, you know, I, I started I I bought I en I enrolled in your class uh, right at the start of the of the fall 2021 uh, live session, and I figured you know oh this is great there's a structure it'll everything will just work out. That is not how it worked at all. Um, uh, I found that, at least for me personally, I needed to give myself some more time to, to work through the material and become, you know, and really make sure I understood the lectures, uh, not only the lectures, but also, you know, the homeworks um, before moving on to the next topic. So, so a couple of weeks in or like a month or two in, I decided that, you know what, I'm just going to ease off the gas pedal a little bit and I'll stick with the live, I'll stick with the live recordings instead. Um, and just finding that routine was was definitely the hardest part of the whole process for me and coming to terms with, you know, uh, with what, you know, would work for me. So it sounds like maybe, um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe finding finding the pace that was suitable to you maybe helped things click? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's accurate. I've also heard a lot of times um, from other former students and engineers that have taken it recently, uh, that have, you know, mirrored the same, same feedback as you, such as, you know, it, it's hard to, to really get a study schedule locked down. Like you said, it's hard to get, to find a good rhythm. Uh, did it feel kind of like, just like this really big mountain at first, you maybe didn't know where to start, or was it more so just getting in the nuts and bolts of the rhythm of, you know, on these days, I'm going to study this many hours, you know, doesn't matter if I'm feeling good or, or not feeling good or, or, uh, tell me more about that. Uh, so are, are you talking about, are you, are you also sort of referencing, you know, finding a balance between, you know, new material versus, you know, going back and reviewing previous topics? I, I would say just in general, um, I'm, I'm curious to know what helped you find that, that better rhythm. Uh, okay. Um, uh, let's say uh, guess and check definitely helped, uh, you know, definitely going through those first couple of live courses, helping me figure out what the live class pace would be like and recognizing that, you know, oh, you know, because by the time the next week came up, I was like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not ready to move on yet. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, I, again, I would say, you know, just, you know, don't, don't be afraid to dive into it head first, you know, you're going to learn along the way. And that's okay. That's part of the process. Just, you know, find, find what, find something that resonates with you and, you know, and take it from there. Excellent. So just, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, you know, lots, lots of self-discovery. <laughs> lots of self-discovery. Great. Um, what else? Um, how about, uh, how'd you, how'd you hear about us? How'd you find our online class for the Power PE exam? I found Electrical PE Review through the, through the PE exam subreddit. Um, you know, I was, while I, while I was, you know, once I was towards the end of getting together my application paperwork, um, I started poking around, you know, seeing what people were saying in terms of review courses. Um, I did decide that I did, I did know in the beginning that I wanted to do a review course because I, you know, my thought process was, you know, Jesse, you know, I want to, you want to give yourself the, the best odds possible to get this thing done in, in one shot. Um, uh, and then, yeah, and then I just, and then I just saw that people were recommending electrical PE review on the, on the subreddit. So I figured, you know what, I, I I'm fortunate enough that my company will, will cover this. Let's, let's see what, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Awesome. Yeah, the that subreddit, it's a fantastic resource. Um, for anyone that's going to be watching uh, this recording after on YouTube, uh, if you haven't gone to the Reddit PE exam subreddit, uh, it's a fantastic resource. A lot of people are either posting things that help them or asking and answering questions. Uh, it's on the main Reddit page, www.reddit.com. 
And then this, the subreddit is r slash, I think that's capital P-E underscore exam. Uh, engineer boards used to be, I would say, the more active community, um, even for power. But I'd say probably in the last year or so, the shift has definitely been uh, uh, much more engagement on that subreddit. I, I thought about uh, checking. I thought about making an engineer an engineering boards account, but I was like, well, I'm already on Reddit. I don't want to. It's just another password and you know username I got to keep track of. So yeah, um, yeah. But it, but it worked out. So you know, no no complaints there. Great. So you found us on uh, the P exam subreddit. Uh, how about uh, how well did our online class prepare you for the P exam? Uh, very well. Um, uh, you know. Like I said before, it's it's a very rigorous class. Um, you you know to, to anyone watching this, I would just say you know be prepared to learn a lot. It won't be easy, and that's okay. You know, um, but you know you this this class will prepare you. Uh, you know, there. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know, Zach talks a lot in the class about you know know about. Uh, you know, making sure you know your fundamentals and he will make sure, you know, sprinkled throughout all the different topics, even once you're past transformers and analysis that uh, that you know how to apply you that that he will make sure that uh, that you know how to that you know how and when to apply the three phase circuit analysis fundamentals and, and other circuit analysis basics uh, to other problems. So, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, what, what I've found, you know, doing a lot of these interviews is what keeps most engineers up at night that are getting ready to take the exam are it's kind of like the patterns uh, that that uh, results in them getting problems wrong on many different uh, subjects and uh, just like you said it's it's a lot of the fundamentals that you know at, at first glance the first time you see that fundamental appear maybe in motors uh, you don't always recognize it in in the next subject and you don't always recognize that although it may feel like i'm getting you know all these different questions wrong across you know transmission lines, uh, fault current analysis, you know, single phase equivalent circuits or delta or Y connections. And it, it might feel like I'm overwhelmed by the number of incorrect answers. A lot of times it can be kind of boiled down or dist uh, distilled down to a really specific fundamental that, you know, regardless of what subject or what practice problem you're working, uh, it's that same kind of sneaky fundamental. It's kind of just disguised itself, uh, you know, under a different uh, subject. Absolutely. Yeah, I found out a lot of times it just takes, you know, repetition. Uh, a lot of the times it just takes repetition to really, really let those fundamentals sink in uh, so that it's easy to recognize them regardless of, uh, of what subject you're appearing in. And then uh, a neat thing that kind of happens, I'd say, and let me know if you agree, but I'd say about halfway through the, the live class semester, uh, once we're kind of in the second half, when you're faced with a problem, as long as your fundamentals are really strong, uh, even if you might really not know how to solve it when you first approach it, by kind of just working it from the fundamentals kind of one step at a time, uh, it's pretty amazing um, how many problems you can kind of derive your way out of or end up uh, answering correctly that, you know, at the initial approach, it's almost like the reaction of, wow, I, I've never seen this before. I don't know how to solve it. It kind of just all, all ties back to the fundamentals. I, I would agree that there were, Probably even on the exam, uh, there were a couple situations where I was able to sort of feel my way through the through the problem, um, relying on you know just the basics and you know arrive what I think was the correct answer. Yeah. Definitely. Um, how about uh, talking about uh, your subjects? Um, let's start off with uh, which subjects were the the hardest to learn, or you know which subject when you're studying. Uh, they felt intimidating or you felt like, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know, I'm never going to be able to, to learn this by the time I take the exam or what subjects really challenged you the most? Uh, fault analysis. Um, it, it should have taken me less than, it should have taken me less time to say that. Fault analysis by far was, uh, was, was by far the, the, the topic that I had the most uh, trouble with. Um, I, it, it was right around when I was getting into the pre-unit system. I, I was going through the pre-work and I was like, okay, this doesn't seem so bad. Um, but then when we, <laughs> and then uh, once, once I got into the lectures and the homeworks, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is brutal. Um, yeah, the per unit system, it's kind of like the great equalizer. You know, it's a really, uh, it's a humbling subject uh, the first time you learn it. 
because uh, on the outside, it, it, it just seems like it doesn't quite make sense. You know, on the outside, when you're first looking at it, the concept makes sense, but getting the values in the per unit system and working them within the per unit system and then getting out of the per unit system, it just seems like, you know, uh, it seems like a mess. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, no disagreements here. Got it. What else? Um, how about what subjects were the were the easiest to learn? Uh, so, okay. So for me, I, I would say my easiest subjects were uh, were th well, not in the beginning, but definitely in hindsight. I would say that my my the, the subjects that I excelled at the most or that, that that made sense to me the most were were three phase analysis, transformers, and motors. Uh, which I guess kind of makes sense because they're they're the they're the first three you learn, um, but like even again going back to those fundamentals, you know, every time you practice those fundamentals in, in other problems, like you'll you'll learn something or you at the you may learn something that'll that'll supplement the knowledge you gained from uh, from learning those three uh, those three units in the very beginning, and I, I would honestly say that those on the exam, those three units were probably my uh, my saving grace so to speak. I knew there were some other areas like per, like fault analysis that I was kind of worried about walking out, but I was like, well, you know, I feel really good about those transformers and three, and uh, I feel good about those motors, transformers, and analysis questions. So hopefully, hopefully that carried me through, which Excellent. is what I think happened. So yeah, I, I don't, I, you know, I think it's really it's it's unrealistic to expect anyone to have a hundred percent competency in every single subject by the time they take the PE exam. Uh, you know, and I'm sure there's, you know, many outliers out there, but unless someone's studying for two or three years exclusively for the exam, which of course they're not going to do, and that's not the purpose of the PE exam, but you know, it's, it's always okay to have that, those one or two subjects where you're a little uneasy about, you know, you're a little uncomfortable with, and, uh, as long as you're, you're comfortable overall, uh, like you said, you know, those subjects are going to kind of carry you through. Um, when I, me personally, when I took the PE exam in 2014, for me, it was symmetrical components. I just couldn't figure it out. Couldn't understand it. And it was kind of like this, you know, decision point. It's like, do I spend time exclusively mastering symmetrical components or do I spend time kind of continuing to spread it out through all the, all the subjects. And I think, uh, it's really helpful when you look at the exam specs, for example, and I love picking on symmetrical components, I would say symmetrical components and per unit are the two ones that uh, most people are challenged with the most. Um, but it's, it's really, they're both individual subtopics. You know, it's not like transformers or motors or codes or protection, you know, they're, they're really the individual subtopics. So, you know, we might only see, you know, two or three questions since they're just part of the overall makeup of the larger subject. So anyone that's going in, whether it's the per unit system, whether it's special components like me, or maybe a lot of people motors are, are tough, especially from a theory standpoint, you know, don't be afraid or don't feel like you have to master everything to pass. No one gets a perfect score, I'm sure, uh, you know, and it's okay, you know, don't, don't hyper-focus on that one small topic at, and exclude all the other topics. A lot of times that's gonna be a, a less successful strategy. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, that was that was definitely the, the feeling I got going into it and coming out of it. And especially in, in the week leading up to the exam, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, there are so many topics that can ask me anything on any of these. Um, but uh, what, what made me feel better was talking to some of my friends who passed, uh, who, who passed uh, some of the civil PE exams uh, within the last year. Um, one of them told me that, you know, uh, it's, you know, the exam, think of it as it's a mile wide, but only about an inch deep in terms of, uh, you know, breadth versus depth. So don't, uh, like you said, you know, don't, if, if there's one, like, if there's one specific topic you're struggling with, don't, don't sweat it. Yeah, don't as sweat long it. As, as long as it's not three phase analysis or anything. <laughs> um, or the square root of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I find that. Um, and I, I think this is common to just engineers in general, like, you know, most of us are, are problem solvers. So when we encounter something that we don't know, uh, it's very easy to just hyper-focus on that, on that one thing. You know, when we feel uncomfortable because we can't figure something out, you know, we ask ourselves why, you know, why, why can't I figure this out? And it's, it's so easy to put all of our time on that one individual subtopic. And then, you know, we might be the master of that subtopic if we keep doing it, but 
we're, we're not going to do so well in all of the other subjects uh, combined. Yeah. Um, so let's let's back up. Uh, motors, transformers, and three phase analysis. You said were your easiest subjects, or the subjects yes. you felt most more uh, most comfortable with. Um, if anyone's watching this and they're studying, uh, if those are their most challenging subjects, uh, any any advice you could offer them for for trying to make it a little easier on themselves? Yes. Um, this this goes back to you know when I was this goes back to the first half when of uh, when I was studying and trying to well first quarter when I was trying to get into a groove and such. So one of the things that really helped me, especially with transformers, is to make note cards. Um, and that, that way, when you're on the go or something, you can easily quiz yourself, uh, you know, um, and that, that really helped, that really helped uh, remind me of, of the key concepts of, of certain things. Transformers, in, in hindsight, I would, well, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I would say that at least from my perspective, in hindsight, transformers might have been a little more complicated than, than machines. Um, and, and making those note cards and writing down those concepts. Like I, maybe, I think you, you probably remember this on the discussion board, uh, Zach, we got into um, a, a conversation as to uh, percent impedance and, and using it with the, uh, with the equivalent circuits and such. Um, but writing down, writing down those, con writing, put, making note cards of those concepts, you know, what is, uh, what, what, what does percent impedance of a, of a, of a, of a transformer mean, you know, and, Things like that. Just it, it the, the note cards really, really helped. So note cards is what I'm trying to say. I like that. Yeah, note cards. I mean, well, I'm a big fan of repetition. So that's you know, you're you're exposing yourself over and over and over, looking at the note cards. And not only that, but taking the time to write the note cards and actually to write it out, um, I'm sure definitely helps helps it stick. Yes, I I would say that. You know, note cards are note cards are effective. Note cards are effective, and I would break that down. You know, sixty uh, sixty percent of the reason is probably writing it down, and forty percent is the is the repetition. Yeah, so. and maybe maybe five percent. You know, they're in your pocket, and you've got five or ten minutes somewhere, and you just got sometimes. You know, just those couple extra minutes of refreshing is all it takes to really almost push something from short term to uh, long term memory. When whenever whenever I was on the train going somewhere, I would always have them in my backpack with me. You know, just pull them out, flip through them. Uh, so when you're on the train, are you looking at the controls and the power and wondering who designed it and who built it? <laughs> um, or wait, or uh, you know, um, I've 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 definitely gained I've because of this class because of, because of the review class I've definitely gained a a, a more a stronger appreciation for for the complexity. Um, even for the code side of things, obviously, you know, railway systems use different uh, use use different codes than than the NEC. Um, but you know, thinking in that way, you know, making sure that things are designed safely, you know, knowing your clearances, um, and of course, uh, you know, I going back to transformers for a second. You know, every time uh, for for anything that uses an AC overhead contact system, the first thing it touches when when uh, when current gets into the train is usually a transformer. And now I think to myself, well, I I know. I know equivalent circuits, so now I kind of know, you know, why why certain vehicles are rated for certain, you know, overhead frequencies, uh, whereas you know some are not, some are rated for different ones. Um, I'm sure there's more complexity to it than that, but you know, it, it the, the the class and just you know looking out the window just got got me thinking. It has me thinking more often. <laughs> sure, yeah, it's all, it's almost like it's easier to see the entire path it takes, almost from the source all the way to the load. Uh, yeah, and and you know understanding and and being able to you know think a little bit more as to you know what's what's happening up behind the scenes and under the hood. Yeah, definitely. Um, how about uh, prior to taking the PE exam, prior to studying for the PE exam, uh, do you work with the code on a, on a, a frequent basis? Uh, so um, I I don't that that's slowly changing, slowly changing. Um, up until now, uh, the the main the probably the main specification that I worked with was something called ATCS, uh, which which defines the architecture for which defines the communication architecture for uh, for train control systems. Um, so nothing you know not nothing directly related to power topics. But lately, I've been you know reading more about vehicle standards and such. And um, APTA posts a lot. APTA is the main source I found so far. 
for finding, you know, recommended practices and, and such for onboard, you know, high voltage circuit design. Um, and just the other day, I was flipping through, uh, I was flipping through uh, the head end power specification. And uh, for, for those of you who may not know, head end power refers to, you know, uh, the subsystem on the train that powers, you know, all the auxiliary loads like lights, you know, HVAC, things like that. Um, and I was reading through the code and it said, you know, Y connected sources, Delta connected transformers. And I was like, I know what those words mean. I am so smart. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it's, it's always fun to hear that a, a lot of, of engineers that I talked to and former students when they pass the PE exam, uh, you know, very similar feedback, uh, just like what you're saying. It's, it's kind of having a, a bigger bird's eye view of everything, not just, you know, okay, here's what I do day in, day out here's what I'm really comfortable with. And I, you know, I kind of see how this all relates, but I don't really understand it versus it's almost like, uh, it's like, you know, a throwback to the original matrix movie trilogy where it's like, you're seeing the matrix. It's like, you can kind of see how it works. You know, just about all the major components that are interconnected, you know, why they're required, you know, what specific, you know, job they're doing, whether it's, you know, uh, stepping up or down voltage or converting from AC to DC in the first place, and then maybe back to AC for different auxiliary systems for, you know, the AC on the trains or, so it's, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like being able to see it all happen in, in real time. As, uh, as, as, as we talked a few minutes ago, I, I, I definitely, you know, the, I definitely have a much stronger appreciation for, uh, for the complexity uh, now after, after getting, after taking the exam and studying for it. Got it. How, um, how was your experience uh, learning the NEC for the PE exam? Uh, um, it, was, it was definitely very intimidating in the beginning. Um, I, I made the mistake of uh, probably I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get a copy of, of the hand of, uh, is, it, is it the thick one that's the hand? Yeah, the thick one is the handbook, I think. Yep. Um, it probably wasn't until about you know two thirds of the way to the exam that I decided to finally you know just go out there and you know just get a copy of the handbook you know save myself a lot of time and stress. Um, I know that it's it's free it's free it's it's free it's freely available online I think from NFPA, but at least for me just having a physical copy of the book and being able to flip through it um, really helped accelerate my uh, my my learning the structure and layout of the book. Um, I would say uh, the the problems the yeah <laughs> some some of the problems uh, in in the class were were a bit of a struggle. Uh, probably the hardest part for me with the code was uh, was motor conductor sizing, especially once temperature ratings and such. Once we, which you have to factor that and in and such. Um, that that was probably the hardest part for me. Um, everything else ev everything else uh, not only on the exam but while while studying as well. Um, I, I was able to pick up on once I had a copy of the code book. How about uh, what was it like using a digital copy of the code book during the test instead of, you know, used to that physical book that you could actually, you know, flip through really quick or shuffle to the index and then shuffle back to the table of context? Uh, that, that is a good question. Um, so the, the transition actually was not as rough as I, as I feared it might be, especially because once you know, um, I had well by by having the physical copy to study, I, I was able. What well, what I'm getting at is once once you learn like the structure of once you learn the overall structure of the document, um, it translates pretty nicely over into over into an electronic version. Um, the search functions, you know, they work really well. Uh, I, I don't yeah the the search functions work really well. It's very easy to flip pages. Um, yeah, once I, I would say if, if you prefer to use a, if you if if you want to use a physical copy for learning, uh, you know definitely go for it. But but don't don't stress over too much the transition from the physical copy to the electronic copy during the exam. That's uh, that's great advice. Um, I'd say just about so far everyone that I've talked to, uh, it's it's pretty evenly split about 50-50. Um, some love the electronic version of the code book, and they you know learned it on the electronic version only. They never got the hard copy book. And uh, the other half is uh, the opposite. Um, hate the digital version, um, only studied off the hard, the hard copy book, uh, made that transition towards getting used to the digital edition uh, towards the end. And uh, the best advice I can give for, for anyone watching this uh, B 
because you know codes and standards is a hot topic. It's the second largest topic on the PE exam. And you know, we're we're typically used to a physical book and in the exam room, we're scrolling on our computer to look at the code book. Uh, me personally, I have to have I have to use a physical book, uh, especially a code book. Um, my brain has a hard time with the layout, like the scrolling vertical layout of a PDF compared to a book where I can just go back and forth and I can stick my arm in, in a fold of a page when I go back to reference this one article and then come back really quick. Uh, so I would definitely say for anyone watching this, whatever you're most comfortable with, and if you're not sure, you're going to find out really quick, um, learn the code book, either hard copy or digital first whichever is gonna be the quickest, the most natural, the most comfortable, the most intuitive. Um, if you do learn better or feel more comfortable with a hard copy book like me personally, I do, um, try to make that transition uh, kind of towards the middle. And when you start making that transition towards using the digital copy of the code book to get yourself ready for the CBT exam, uh, don't feel like you gotta go cold turkey. You know, You can solve a practice problem using the hard copy book and then take a break, solve the same problem using the digital version right after to kind of reinforce the layout. Um, yeah, me personally, I have, a, I have a very tough time. And uh, the hard thing about the code book, you know, it's not, it's not exactly the easiest book to read. I mean, it's, it's such dry black and white, almost like legal language to where you can't really learn it by reading it, right? It's really hard to retain it. You can only really learn it by just doing problem after problem after problem to where after a while you've done enough problems or it's like you kind of understand the layout. Uh, you understand, I'm sure you'll agree, the terminology. It's easier to recognize like those subtle differences, you know, must, shall, maximum, minimum, not exceed, you know, the very specific uh, language that is going to be the difference on, on the right or wrong answer. And so it, it really, the only way to learn is just doing enough problems to where you just start to feel comfortable with the overall layout and the language. I would say that for me personally, uh, obviously everyone is different. My, my biggest, my biggest issue, the reason I, I did my biggest issue with the, with the, with the free electronic version is that um, uh, I, I just, as going into it, like with, with only like a month and a half to go before the exam, well, a little more than that, I think um, I, I realized that, you know, there's, you know, there's no way, I, I could learn it using the electronic version, but it's going to take a lot longer to do that versus if I just, you know, bite the bullet and get a physical copy. Um, oh, uh, one other thing, actually. Uh, so I, I would definitely say that, uh, luckily, um, the version that you get on the NCES exam is way easier to is, is easier to navigate than the than the free version that you, that 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 people may be using to study with, um, which is great. It uh, <laughs> I, I was a little bit worried because I just didn't know what to expect. Um, but it's, it's, it's not so bad. It's definitely manageable. You know, as Zach said, you know, work through the problems, know where the keys kind of, you know, learn the structure, know where the key sections are, know what keywords to look for. Um, and, 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 and you should be fine. It's, it's, it, yeah. Yeah. And for anyone that's not familiar, um, what Jesse's referring to is if you go to nfpa.org, uh, you can launch, um, it's kind of like a simulated book viewer, but you can launch a free version of the National Electrical Code. Uh, but it's, it's definitely harder to study from because it's not, it's not like a PDF document. Um, you can't really search. It's difficult to navigate. Uh, if, you're, if your company will buy a PDF version, lean on your company. I mean, it's a resource that you're going to use on the job anyways. Um, but yeah, during the exam, it's going to be much more similar to a PDF where you can, you know, control F or shift control F. I've heard both ways. Uh, you can search and uh, it's, it's easier to navigate like a PDF, not like the free preview. So yeah, don't, don't let that scare you. Um, but if it's not in your budget to get a second digital copy to study from, then that free preview on nfpa.org is a fantastic resource that they provide. All right, how about, uh, here's some good questions. Um, did anything in hindsight, did anything turn out to be uh, a big waste of your time that you would recommend engineers not do that are getting ready to take the exam? Uh, like as in, you know, spending too much time on certain topics or like, uh, or, or uh... sure, it oh, can be, oh. it can be maybe spending too much time on certain topics. It can be, 
you know, spending too much time on reference books or too much time on practice games, maybe anything that's, that's personal to you that, that others, uh, you know, you might be able to save, save them some time. Uh, anything that you learned in hindsight where, you know, you're studying and after all you're thinking, you know what, this really isn't the best use of my time. I'm going to shift my studying to these habits instead. Uh, so, um, uh, one of the thing, one of the things that I would recommend, one of the mistakes that I made, uh, that I would, you know, obviously hope other people avoid is, uh, you know, um, you know, the, the practice, the practice PE exams, um, will, will be a humbling experience, you know, just don't just, just, uh, you know, rip the bandaid off, you know, get it, get, get, you know, dive into it sooner than later. Um, Zach's exam in particular, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, it's a rigorous exam and you will learn a lot, but, you know, don't, don't, don't be too hard on yourself if, if you find yourself struggling. Um, uh, yeah, I, yes. Um, I would say that, you know, if you're feeling kind of down, uh, if, if, if you're, if you're running into some, you know, particularly difficult problems while studying, um, and you want to take a break or you want to, you, or you want some sort of, you know, um, a morale boost, you know, take a, take a shot at some of the, at some of the problems in the, in the NCES sample exam. You, uh, you might find yourself pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess my point is, you know, if, if you find yourself, you know, getting hung up on, on too many difficult problems, you know, take, take a step back. Um, and uh yeah look uh you know go go yeah when when yeah i i think uh i think i've made my point just you know don't don't get too hung up on difficult problems if if it's chewing too much time yeah don't don't let any don't let wrong answers or difficult problems especially when you're tired you're underslept maybe you're hungry maybe it's the fourth or fifth day in a row of studying maybe you were working late from you know a new project at work you know don't don't beat yourself up over a couple of tough problems and I like what you said, rip the bandaid off quick on those practice exams. Yeah. <laughs> it's first practice exam. It's a humbling experience. You want to get, you want to get past that uh, early on. You don't want to wait a month before the exam because it's going to humble you. And as long as you still have, you know, a few months before you take the real thing, that humbling uh, moment is, it's uh, very motivating to uh, double down and, uh, and step on the gas a little bit and uh, up the study efforts. Um, what else? How about uh, our, so going back to our live classes. So it sounds like um, you, you kind of found a better pace that fit your, your uh, schedule and you're watching the classes on demand. Uh, how'd you like the, uh, the live class recordings? Uh, they were great. Uh, <laughs> the, um, they were, they were very helpful. Um, obviously if, if I, 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 I appreciate you reading out the questions that people were typing in the chat um, and the answers that people were giving just because, you know, as someone watching the recording as you, we don't, we don't have access to that, to that, to that feature, unfortunately, um, which I guess is a limitation of Zoom rather than, uh, rather than something with the class. But in any event, um, the, the live recordings are great. Z uh, you know, Zach uh, really does address you know, he, he addresses, you know, all, he addresses all the good questions in the chat and there will be a lot of them. Um, uh, and again, the, the major benefit is that you can take your own pace with, with the recordings, you know, don't, don't feel bad because you can't keep up with the live class. You know, the recordings are there as, as an additional tool and definitely, definitely use them. So how about, um, <clears throat> even though that, even though you're watching the recording of class on demand instead of attending it live, uh, did it still feel like you were kind of part of the group? Did it still feel like you were you were kind of participating in the moment? And uh, how'd you feel about being able to still ask questions on the uh, discussion board, even though again, watching the recording instead of attending live and having the live chat feature? Um, so, uh, well, first of all, there were, there were several times when I was watching the recordings and I was like, wait, what about, and, and, I, and, I, and a question would come to mind and then someone would ask it or you would address it. Um, which, you know, I would say that that would be like the primary line of, that, that would be the primary uh, preferred way of getting it, of getting those things resolved. Um, but the, the discussion board, the discussion board is an excellent feature. I, I regret not getting, not, not getting more involved with it sooner. Um, again, that was the, uh, like, like the code book, that was something I, that was a tool that I really didn't, you know, take advantage of until the second half of, of studying. Um, 
No, uh, Zach, Zach's answers are, you know, Zach will respond, you know, he, uh, he the answers are pretty helpful. And of course, you know, uh, if, if Zach doesn't get to you, well, if Zach doesn't get to you first, someone else in the, someone else in the discussion board might get there first. Um, and then, and then you'll, there'll be some sort of confirmation whether or not the answer was right or wrong. Uh, I, I think from you usually, you'll, I think you'll usually follow up if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, really, really fortunate that. So um, we've got a live chat feature for attending live. You can ask questions to me and the rest of the students in real time. We all participate in a big group. And then when the class recording is posted, um, even if you watch it after the fact, even if you attended it live and just wanted to rewatch the video, uh, our, our offline discussion board, um, it's really the most, in my opinion, it's the most engaged discussion board on the internet for uh, discussing the PE exam. And uh, I'm always you know, blessed that um, our students are always very engaging. So a lot of times students will, will answer before I even have the chance. And then uh, I typically start my morning by checking in and making sure that uh, everyone's questions are being answered and, and that all, all the questions or all the answers are accurate. But yeah, it's, it's uh, easily the most, most engaged discussion board on, on the internet for the power exam. I, uh, I oh, uh, sorry, I just wanted to add one thing. Jump on in, yeah. Um, so just even, even just by reviewing the questions that people are asking, you know, you, you, you might learn something new as well, so. Yeah, Just definitely. Talk, talking to people who are watching this video. It's, uh, it's amazing, you know, someone will ask a question and so many people in the background uh, had that same question without realizing, right? A lot of times when someone asks a question, they're kind of half a step ahead and uh, everyone else in the class, you know, jumps at the same conclusion, um, kind of, you know, the same mindset of, yes, that's a fantastic question. Let's explore that deeper. Uh, whether it's a live live chat room or the discussion board, the, the question and answers, it's a fantastic way to learn. It's, it's also one of my favorite aspects about teaching the class. Um, how about uh, any major light bulb moments during the semester with us? Uh, yes. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I had to think about that for, yeah, for a second. Take your time. Um, I would say for me, probably the, the the biggest light bulb moment was realizing that you know when when you're doing your conversion, um, you know when when you use when you use the single phase equivalent circuit, um, you know when when you convert your source, uh, you can use that if I I don't remember I, correct me if I'm mistaken because you you are the expert here. Um, I, I think if if there's no line impedance and and you don't know the voltage for the source but you know the voltage across the load or if you can determine the voltage across the load, you can do the same conversion. To get to your equipped uh, for for the equivalent circuit, and that's something that I did not. That's something that uh, that I did not pick up on uh, as early as I would have liked. Uh, that was that that was something I picked up probably in the last month of studying. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like uh, uh, the craziest puzzle where you can work it forwards, you can work it backwards, you can jump right yeah. in the middle and kind of work your way out. You know, you can work from the edges, meet in the middle. It's like everything it's like it's like one big circle yes um you know th this goes back to fundamentals but uh you know if, if uh you know if, if you know your fundamentals if, if you know if you know your if you know that single phase equivalent circuit inside and out like it'll 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 come into play when when it, it might even come into play when you least expect it just having have knowing how knowing how the, the underlying mechanics work and, and such Absolutely, yeah. The single phase equivalent circuit—it's—I'd uh, say—it's one of the most powerful tools for quantitative questions. Any questions with numbers when you're crunching numbers, single phase equivalent circuit uh, combined with a little bit of power fundamentals—it's—it's uh, it's amazing how many practice problems uh, you can solve throughout just about any any subject. All right. Uh, what else? Um, we're getting towards the end here. Uh, how about last two questions? Um, First one is uh, any advice that we haven't covered. So open format, any advice you can think of uh, that you'd like to share with an engineer that's watching, uh, that's getting ready to take the PE exam. So maybe either they've already had an exam date and they just started studying, but they haven't taken the exam yet, or someone that has the PE exam you know, in mind uh, in the near future. So any engineer that hasn't taken it, um, any piece of advice that you would offer them? Um. So for, first and foremost, uh, get it out of the way sooner than later, uh, definitely. Um, I, I would recommend, 
uh, I would recommend, obviously it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, this one, but I would, at, at, at the, I would recommend, um, you know, just if, if you can, if you can manage it, uh, definitely take a review course. You know, you don't want to have to, you don't want to, you want to, you want to give it your best shot the first time around. Um, uh, I would say, you know, on, on the less technical note, I, I guess I would say, you know, definitely review the examinee guide that, that NCES publishes. There is, there's a lot of good information in there. Um, you know, one of the things that I, one of the things that, that I thought was kind of unclear is, you know, how, um, you know, in my mind, leading up to the exam, I'm going over, you know, what are, you know, let's say I don't pass the first time around, you know, what are my options? You know, the, the examinee guide will, will outline all that for you. Um, you know, just, uh, and, and, and on that note, actually review any, any, free, any free documentation or policy stuff that, NC, that NCES uploads, take, take your time to review it. Um, oh, and uh, I would suggest um, one other thing. Um, so the application, as uh, the app, the application will take some time to get to get all your paperwork in and such. Uh, you know, don't feel like you don't feel like uh, don't feel like you have to wait to start to start studying until after your paperwork is in and, and it's approved. Um, you you will definitely buy yourself some more flexibility uh, by by starting uh, before your application is submitted and all that. Um, that's that's one of the things I wish that I did in hindsight, actually. That's uh, that's great advice. I don't I don't think I've I've heard that from anyone yet, and uh, you know when by the time the application does come through, you've already started studying. Maybe you've already found your pace and your rhythm that works that works for you, and you're not uh, you're not starting cold. Right, and there will be, yeah, and and the application process, at least for me, it took it took like six weeks for me to hear back once I submitted my last you know piece of paperwork. So you know that's. Yeah, anything to give yourself a head start. And I also like uh, that you mentioned take your time reading uh, not just the NCES examinee uh, examinee guide, but also all of their documents. Uh, I feel like that that really helps answer questions in terms of uh, what to expect, what to expect in the exam room on the exam computer now that it's CBT format, uh, and and what to expect in terms of okay, what am I really getting myself. Uh, involved with and and what are the boundaries and constraints of of the PE exam? What happens if I have to take it more than once? Um, and and what what rules am I agreeing to uh, when I take this exam? That's a that's a fantastic advice. Um, I get a lot of emails still to this day, and I can't tell you how often uh, you know I'll I'll answer them, but then I always recommend you know read it directly from the makers of the test themselves. You know, you, there's no no other uh, authority on the subject. It's it's they're the they're the ones making the exam. They're the ones proctoring the exam. They're the ones creating the exam. Uh, every document that they put out regarding the exam, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, everyone should be very well familiar with them and answer a lot of questions. Uh, one sorry, one one thing just sure. came to mind. Absolutely. Um, so was, speaking of the examinee guide, uh, with respect to the calculator policy, um, I know this is the calculator that Zach recommends, but get the TI thirty six. Uh, X Pro, just do it. From what I've read, it's better than the other ones, and just from using it, it makes life so much easier. It's, it's, it's just an all-around excellent calculator. Um, you know, complex number. I, I kind of wish I had that. I had something like that in college that could do complex numbers like that. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to you know, chill for HP just just for just for a second. Yeah, yeah, no, that's an excellent recommendation. It's, it's, uh, I think it's the most intuitive calculator. Um, some people like the Casio better, more power to them. Uh, I don't. Uh, if someone does like the Casio better, stick to what works for you. But I'd say easily 75 to 80% of the people should be, should be using the TI from day one. If you're not sure, try both. Get a backup calculator anyways, in case you're, you know, if your calculator fails during the exam, it's always smart to have a backup. If you're not sure, get one of each. Uh, try one for, for a week or two, figure out which one you're going to be naturally more inclined to. But yeah, the, the TI, it's for me personally, it's just, it's just more intuitive. All right. Last question, Jesse. Um, if someone, uh, any engineers that are watching this, uh, if they're trying to decide what online review course to take or what online class to enroll in, um, any advice on how to recommend, uh, how to figure out what's the right program for them? Uh, 
you know, I, I probably can't give a great answer for that question. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I got lucky and, and found a program that worked for me. You know, everyone's brains works a little differently. Um, so it is a little bit of a personalized process. But I, I would say that I, I would say that if you're shopping around for, for a review course, um, look for something at the very least, if not live lectures, then recorded lectures, uh, some dedicated way to engage with the instructor team in some way. You know, being having access to that discussion board was 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 great. It was a huge asset. Um, uh, and 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 the, the last thing that comes to mind is look for a course that has access to like a lot a lot of practice problems. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Zach's course meets all those criteria. Um, but that but but for anyone looking looking for a course in general, those are the main um, things that I would be that I would be paying attention to. Excellent. All right, Jesse, well, we're right here at the end. Hey, thanks again so much for coming on. Uh, thanks for sharing more about your experience, not just with our online class for the PE exam, but with your experience with the PE exam in general. Uh, thanks for sharing your advice. I'm sure a lot of people uh, watching this are gonna be able to relate to it and probably saved uh, a lot more headache than, uh, than you know. Um, yeah. uh, a lot of, I get emails all the time uh, when people watch these videos and, and they really appreciate it. So I wanted to extend that appreciation to you. Uh, again, uh, thanks for coming on and thanks for talking with us. Uh, this was fun. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me on. Cool. Congrats again on passing the P exam one and done one and done. And, uh, you know, enjoy all of the uh, future success that your license is going to bring you. I will, will do. <laughs> all right, Jesse, we'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Zach. Bye.